Dallas pastor yeah. Bishop T.D. Jakes is sharing an important message about the time it takes to create change. He is a senior pastor at the Potter's House, which has more than 30,000 members. Bishop Jakes spoke out on Friday. Real change comes in process and comes in time. And I think we're at a turning point right now. Which way that turn goes is up to you and I and what we do with it and how we respond to it. Bishop Jakes joins us only on CBS this morning. Bishop, it's always good to see you. I've heard it described as a reckoning, a watershed moment, a game changer, a tipping point. We just heard you say a turning point is the word you use. So how do we embrace this moment and turn it into real change? Well, first of all, I think that it is a turning point because it is, uh, uh, the protesters are not uh, all black or all white. The American community is all marching. In fact, the global community is marching in an unprecedented way that is indicative of the fact that, that we have been heard and somebody gets it. But what we really must focus on is moving from protesting to policy. Uh, you can only protest so long, and protesting is great at getting attention, and it has gotten attention around the world, which is very important. But if that protesting doesn't turn into policy, at the end of the day, we will go back to normalcy. We've seen this too many times before. Yeah, I know people keep saying, we've heard this song before, what's going to be different? And I keep saying, listen, I know it's about race, black and white, but I also see that it's about humanity. Do you see it as being bigger than black and white as well? I think it, it, it initiated being about black and white, but it ultimately it becomes about right and wrong. And people begin to understand that what they saw, the atrocities that they saw executed on George Lloyd were so reprehensible that it was hard to deny that this isn't wrong, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. Had it not been for the click of a camera, we would never even know what happened. The records were falsified. There was all types of corruption in the process. There's a discrepancy in the autopsies. It just shows that there is a system uh, that condones and supports, and uh, uh, there is a fraternity in this uh, debauchery that has to be dealt with and has to be cleaned out from the root up. If we don't clean it out from the root up and we just pick a few leaves off the tree, we're going to be back here again in a few months. Oh, I want to talk to you about the looting, and some people are calling it rioting. People say, listen, use the word demonstration. I've heard you say, don't let that be a distraction on what we should focus on. What do you mean? You know, anytime you have a anytime you have a massive crowd of this magnitude and anybody can walk in and anybody can walk up and anybody can participate, it is hard to regulate that kind of behavior. But we cannot let the misdeeds and the inappropriate deeds of a few uh, distract us from the cause for which we're out there. And I think when we do that, we start trying to treat the symptoms, but we don't try to fix the infection. And I think we have to bypass the symptoms and, and grappling with the symptoms and fix the infection. We need these other police officers to be arrested and we need to handle those issues. We need to set up a council to develop a policy that is comprehensive throughout all police departments and we need to regulate it and deny financial aid to police departments that do not live up to those regulations. We need substantive change and we cannot be distracted by a few vigilantes that come in and distort the essence of why people are out there marching in the first place. Yeah, you know, people keep saying now is the time for healing. Let's come together. But I've heard you say maybe people aren't ready to heal at this particular point in time. What do you mean by that? There's no way we can have healing. It's like opening up somebody in the middle of a surgery and say, you know, let's heal while they're still bleeding. It's not healing that we're after. It's change that we're after. If we need to reset the bone, let's do it now while everything is open. If we need to remove the cancer, let's remove it now. But you don't want to heal in the middle of a surgery. We want to heal when things are right. And I think that our rush to get back to normalcy has caused us to over and over again be uh, unproductive in bringing about long-term systemic changes that are actionable, uh, that are satisfying, and that causes America to live up to its creed and its highest ideals. We've got the right ideals. We just don't live up to them. 
And Bishop Jakes, you know, uh, uh, this is probably the first week in a long time that we haven't really led with the COVID story. All of this is happening, too, in the middle of a COVID pandemic. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that's that's the, the tragedy about this situation. We have three crises going on simultaneously. I don't think we have ever in the history of this country had three of this magnitude. We have an economic pandemic. We have a physiological uh, health pandemic. And then we have a sociological pandemic going on all at the same time. And it has reached global proportions. You can't have a problem in America in either one of the fronts that does not affect the entire globe. And we have all of them going on simultaneously. And I have to admit, this is a dangerous time for our country because of the convergence of those three different issues uh, coalescing at the same time. It's a very dangerous time because we have enemies and we have external enemies that seek to exploit these opportunities. And we have to be all the more vigilant to be watchful because we are quite vulnerable right now. We have unrest in every area of our government and every area of our being. And we do not have the solidarity that we need to be the country that is able to defend itself and defend our allies because we are distracted by internal corruption, which is, is the story of the fall of the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. I want to get your take on this. You know, uh, Donald Trump went to church, stood in front of a church and held a Bible. And Reverend William Barber, who I know you know, and a Christian preacher, Jonathan Wilson Hartgrove said, the president's use of the Bible was obscene. He should try reading the words inside. Now, to be honest, I don't know whether the president reads a Bible or not, but I know you do. So I would like to know, what was your take when you saw that? I think, uh, you know, one of the things that I think is important to realize that America is a country that has a lot of religions. Now, I am a Christian. I support Christianity. But by the same token, we need to have a government that expresses impartiality to all the other uh, schools of thought that exist in the world. When people want to hear about theology, they come to church. When they want to hear about policy, they go to the White House. The convergence of those two have to be carefully handled. I'm not saying that one can't affect the other, but we have to be very, very careful that we don't pollute or dilute uh, the very idea of democracy, the very idea of a republic that embraces an overarching umbrella that allows us to have the freedom of religion and the freedom of choice and the freedom to believe or not believe. And sometimes in the process of expressing your personal faith, I won't question his faith. I think it leaves a message to people who have other belief systems that they might be uh, biased in some way. And then it sounds like a dog whistle uh, to the base, to, to be quite candid. And uh, that's not what we need right now. We don't need to collect the base, we need to collect the country, the whole country, the Jews, the atheists, the agnostics, the Muslims. It's going to take the whole country coming together because the marching in the street is proof that people who are marginalized eventually erupt. And so right now, our focus cannot be on the nuances of our own individual beliefs. So I share those beliefs. I'm wholeheartedly a Christian. I love the faith. I love the Bible. I love the word of God. But right now, what we need as a yes. country is to pull everybody, black, white, young, old, Jews, Gentiles, all types of people, bring them together all right. so that we can live up to what the idea is all about. All right, Bishop. Yes. Your message is stay focused, people. Stay focused. Thank you very much, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Always good to see you.